Uh, this is a, a, a two-part poem with trying to put uh, all kinds of things together. Um, um, and there was a stray line that became the overall title. Though it, it, it's, this is sort of Miss Manners, um, <laughs> the new volume. Those who say like lack analogy. The first of these poems was occasioned by uh, walking uh, up um, 6th Avenue in the 20s, and I came across a really big store with very expensive stuff in it. I don't even remember what it was, but I realized that there was a lot of it, and there were a lot of the same items, but that all of them were very expensive, and suddenly it struck me, who can buy all of this, given the supposed 1% of the people who could. But then I realized that actually that 1% was enormous and then th there was a kind of a mathematics that had to be done. And I always hated math. Outside the big store, the population has grown, increased. The world has more people, more rich people, and many, many more poor people because that's the way it is. And so we know how many more people there must be. And the uh, second of these is anything between us becomes money and manners. Thank you. No problem. And if there was a problem, pas de quoi. Je vous en prie. Prego. Vite. You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> This is called Decal. Coffee to go in either hand, shady exit down the spa steps, indentured tulip morning engine zenith, a butterfly speeds off, weary of these flats where palm trees pose and the children push. Macabre distinctions all told, tragic as a near miss for indifferent sake. The moonlit frigate sequestered on a reef She'll have the silver taken at one of her lengths, turn to the air to pro turn the air to proper then make mine magnolia. This is called in Königsberg or Kenigsberg, however. Kenigsberg is a town where the philosopher Immanuel Kant spent time. Pardon the insult, move the herd, nothing a guy can't do, ergo study harder if you are found wanting. No secret there, part conniption, enter fate, slow bag of viscous matter on a string. Plausible entities trade robes, bad physics squeaks by to cater excess of air, a favorite of the colors this side of the angels under low aesthetic skies. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, um, your fever. Uh, exogeny is when the swimming pool casts its poetry from the side of your mouth Blue yacht rhythms pop at the flickering bauble on the wrist of personable divinity. You guessed the flavor, made the rounds, now actively, now not at all. Whoever lies down by that edge has the fever. Reverie, this was written for a, a painter, uh, a colleague of mine actually at the Art Institute named Bruce McGaw. 
And he, he had been teaching at the Art Institute for 51 years. You do the math. Actually, he started when he was about 19 or 20 as a teacher. But, uh, so they celebrated him finally this year with a little show in this gallery where they had they had to, his friends had to struggle to get <coughs> the show because they kept saying we don't show um, what do they call it conventional forms anymore. <laughs> you know, sort of the new artistic Stalinism. Close up on an ancient blue convertible rolling down beach road, orange cabana filled to bursting with complementary colors and one daring fluorescent orange that isn't. The trunk is open and empty, the thief asleep in the passenger seat, caught in the crosshairs, pink like the peony. Sort of, if you write poems for painters, you're sort of fated to name a lot of colors. <laughs> <laughs> but the greatest poem is called Poem for Painters. Uh, uh, John Wieners' poem, I think, doesn't have a single color mentioned in it at all. It just talks about scratching. <laughs> Paul Clay and scratching. Um, Okay, this is the last poem I'll read. It's, it, it's a little longer, and it's a, a poem dedicated to a painter. And I don't know if there are any colors in it. Uh, uh, by, uh, the painter is Ed Ruscha, and the poem is called As If You Didn't Know. Going after something word for word, the drill bit, rumination scattered notes early on, sunny and fair, a screwy residue prevailing. Faulty logics bulldoze function flattens like nerve that faster affect opens. Logic can't atone, except the fun parts. Dire quirks and chortles, blurts and fumes, incongruity produces. Too true at mental edges. Clarity's aftershocks administer in kind. Black, blank, not black, blank, mm -hmm. gorgeous fact we applaud and laugh with. The unsure subtlety whose inventive uplift resembles heaven, handy as the name lost at first in memory, returned unbidden and just as piercing, a mere slip like money in the bank, no rest for liquidity, margin of error and risk, a very modern view, history cashed in, all that, in a fabulous snit. What's left, poetry installer, downloaded clicks right back at you. Nothing behind. None other either way. Same old, same old story. One finger at a time. Formal silence presses down. A deep note boldly enters a bended knee. The way music loves company. Those breathers arranged by twos after eons at the piano. Such talk. Let's hear it. Imperceptible downbeat, periodic oblivion, all thoughts suspended like the reckless parallelogram, resident glory splinters in that great picture of sunlight, splendor showered on a vacancy with just you.